and contamathon. The, the Spirit of God is upon me, for he has anointed me and sent me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the broken heart. Good morning. Good morning. morning's Mass has been offered for us and our families, and in particular, Anthony D. Benura. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Today, the Church celebrates the memory of St. Pius of Pietrelcina, better known as Padre Pio. Let us come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Haggai. On the first day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai, to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Sheetiel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak. Thus says the Lord of hosts, this people says, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then this word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet. It is time for you to dwell in your own family houses while this house lies in ruins. Now thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown so much, but have brought in little. You have eaten, but have not been satisfied. You have drunk, but have not been exhilarated. Have clothed yourself, but not been warmed. And whoever earned wages, earn them for a bag with holes in it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up into the hill country. Bring timber and build a house that I may take pleasure in it. And receive my glory, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. The Lord takes the light in his people. The Lord takes the light in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song, a praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord makes the light of his people. Let them praise his name in festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adores the lowly with victory. The Lord takes the light of his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy under their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throat. This is the glory of all his faithful. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ. Life, says the Lord, no one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And Herod kept trying to see Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So King Herod, we know, is the one who put John the Baptist to death. And uh, he thought that he was a holy man, and he was somewhat attracted to his preaching and his ministry. But in the end, he couldn't stand to be shown up by John the Baptist, who accused him of sinful behavior in marrying his brother's wife. Uh, that, that was the, the final toll which got him in prison. Uh, and then, of course, it was Herod's uh, new wife and her daughter who asked for the head of John the Baptist. So Herod, there was a, like an inkling, a spark of what could have been faith in him, but he snuffed it out. And he went the worldly, secular way to his perdition. And so here now, John's dead, and Herod's beginning to hear about Jesus. They're, they're talking about this guy, Jesus. He's traveling all over Israel. He's preaching to people. He's healing people. And now he's sending out his disciples, and they're doing exactly the same thing preaching, teaching, and healing, and large crowds of people are gathering. And so Herod says, is this John the Baptist, who's now come back from the dead? Or is it what others are saying, the ancient prophet Elijah is arisen, or one of the other prophets? And Herod was curious to see who this Jesus was. But just a curiosity, just a mere human curiosity, no indication that Herod was prepared for a change of life or a change of heart. And I think uh, for us, we face the same question, really. Do we have just a, a, a passing interest or curiosity in Jesus? Or have we really allowed Jesus into our lives so that he sees our hearts, our minds, our imaginations, and we're all in with Jesus? Uh, it's very easy to follow the road of Herod. Curiosity. They're, they're people who look, follow religious figures and reports of miracles and all these things out of curiosity. And then their curiosity is satisfied and, and there's no change at all. Nothing happens. Today we uh, celebrate uh, a, a, a saint, a modern saint, Padre Pio, born in the late 1900s, died in the 1960s. Uh, a man who was... Uh, drew a lot of curiosity seekers because when he celebrated his very first mass as a priest, he had a vision of Jesus and several of the saints. And when he completed his first mass, he had received the stigmata, the wounds of Christ. And uh, this became, became, became a celebrity for that, even though he was a very simple, uh, holy, pious, um, Franciscan friar, a Capuchin friar, and uh, his only desire was to serve Jesus through holiness of life and in the sacraments. And of course, many people came to see him because they had a desire to encounter Jesus through him. They came to him so that he would pray with them. They came to him so that he would hear their confession. Uh, it's reported so many times that people would come to confession, and he would tell them what their sins are. How'd you like that if you come into the confessional? Father Andrew and I said, well, I know what your sins are, and here they are. That would be pretty scary, right? That would have to be a divine infusion of knowledge in order to be able to know that. Uh, St. John Paul II once was praying with a woman when he was uh, a bishop in Poland. He was praying with a woman who had uh, incurable, I think it was brain cancer, incurable brain cancer. And I don't know, it was throat cancer, incurable throat cancer. And she was getting closer and closer to her death. And he wrote a letter to Padre Pio and asked Padre Pio to pray for her. 
And in almost no time at all, the cancer reversed itself and it went away and the woman was healed. And that story repeated itself quite a bit. So today we celebrate somebody who's uh, more than just a mere curiosity, but someone who was a true saint of God. And finally, I want to end with uh, one of the famous sayings. Padre Pio didn't write much in his life because of his celebrity, because of jealousy among many religious leaders. They basically locked the man up for a large part of his, his life. And so he stopped writing and he just went into deep prayer. Uh, but one of the profound things he said, and it's so simple, but it's so profound. It's a slogan to live by. Pray, hope, and don't worry. Five words from a canonized saint. Pray, hope, and don't worry. Sometimes we give lip service to prayer instead of really entering into prayer with God. Sometimes our, our hope or our trust in God is kind of marginal. And sometimes we spend a huge amount of time worrying about things that we absolutely cannot control. So Padre Pio has, a, has the words for us. Pray, hope, and don't worry. And I saw Maria this morning, and she's got a t-shirt on which says, Pray, hope, and don't worry. So there's the confirmation for the day. That's, that's our message from the Lord. So we uh, pray today to have more than a passing curiosity in Jesus, but a real desire to make Jesus the center of our lives. And we pray that the, uh, the motto, the way that uh, Padre Pio lived, under great scrutiny, under great suspicion, uh, under incredible pain from his uh, stigmata, that the, the, the motto of Padre Pio will become our motto for living, that we might pray to God, hope in Jesus Christ, and not worry about all those things in our lives that are troublesome, but that we ultimately can't do anything about other than pray. Please stand as we bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. That church leaders may be blessed with every grace and wisdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may guide the leaders of nations in enacting policies to promote the common good and protect the vulnerable, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who labor may be justly compensated with dignified working conditions and living wage, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Succor, we may be spared the loss of life and damage to property during this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's continue to pray for all of those who were affected by Hurricane Ida and are attempting and sometimes struggling to recover. Especially we want to pray for the displaced residents of uh, Metairie Towers, for God's uh, strengthening and grace and for resources for the recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd also like to pray for our parishioner, Kathy Lorio, who will have uh, heart, uh, open heart surgery tomorrow uh, to repair several blockages, that the, uh, that the Lord may guide her doctors and all of her medical providers and uh, bring her to a full and complete healing and comfort her with the knowledge of his presence and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I happen to know 18 people who celebrate their birthdays today, including my brother Robert and one of my cousins and my good friend Paula and many others, several priests included, that God may bless all of them as they celebrate their birthdays. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now our morning prayers. Prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus, may they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. 
Allow a vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Give women leaders of nations, give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus. For you are our beloved and healing Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rob, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Amen. Loving and faithful God, who through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of our Lady of Prompt Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Mount Sakor, hasten to help us. Mother Henry and Zilu, pray, pray for, for us and we may be a holy family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Yeah. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Padre Pio, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the festival of Padre Pio, you bid your church rejoice. You strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Pius of Pietrocina, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Padre Pio, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Reminder that our food bank is open on Thursdays uh, in St. Joseph Hall from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, Father Andrew has a meeting with young adults uh, this evening. It's from 6.30 to 8 in St. Joseph Hall. Uh, anyone aged 21 to 39, married or single, is invited to participate. Uh, there will be a, a meal and also a planning meeting. And uh, this Saturday, our parishioners will be going to St. Anthony Church and, uh, in Lafitte, Louisiana, a 40-minute drive from here, to help clean up residences of parishioners. Uh, we need help with manual labor, but also people who just want to serve meals. Meals will be served from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., so li literally we'll just be serving food that's already there. So if you can help in any of those capacities, even for a short while, please sign up on our website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Pray, hope, and especially don't worry. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you very much.